find these words. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears altogether. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. My, 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 what a word. Our hymn of praise this morning is I Surrender All. <laughs>
going to go before him in prayer. I ask now that you bow your head with us, please. Eternal Father God, we have come this morning, Lord, to declare you to be God and to declare that beside you, God, there is none other. Father God, we have come into your house, Lord God, so that we may enter into your presence. God, we didn't come just for fellowship with each other, God. We came to fellowship with you. So God, as we come before your throne this morning, let us come with a spirit of thanksgiving and a heart full of gratefulness, God. God, let us be thankful, Lord God, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross, Lord God, to pay a sin debt that we owed and could not pay. God, let us forever be grateful, God, that you accepted, that you accepted our cry of repentance, Lord God, that we may be cleansed and made whole before you and righteous before you, God. God, we have come into your house this morning just to say thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord God. God, we thank you that when we laid down last night, we weren't sleeping outside, that we had a roof over our head. God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that when we arose this morning, God, and we went to our table, there was food on the table. God, we thank you. God, we thank you that when we left our home, Lord God, that you had an automobile prepared to bring us to your house. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for those of us who have jobs, Lord God, and we thank you for the job that you're going to bring to those who are seeking. God, we thank you. God, we thank you that when we could have been dead and gone, you had grace and you showed mercy, God, we thank you. God, we thank you that your word is true. We thank you, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit is real. God, we thank you, Lord God, that when the enemy would have taken our life, Lord, that you said, no, God, we thank you. God, we thank you this morning that when we open up our mouths to sing praises unto heaven, that, God, they will be received by you. God, we thank you this morning. 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 If we come before with a heart of thanksgiving, God, you will allow your spirit to fall fresh in this building this morning. God, we need a fresh anointing from you. So, God, we thank you. God, we thank you that you have looked over our families, God, as the pandemic raged throughout the land, but God, you have covered us, so God, we thank you. God, we thank you for everything that you are in our lives and everything that you've always been and that which you are right now, God, for we can't change the past and we don't know what tomorrow holds, so right now, this present, God, we just say thank you. We thank you that things are as well as they are. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Things may not be perfect, God, but I thank you. All areas in my life are not what I think they should be, but God, I thank you. Hey, God, we just come this morning to love on you. We didn't come, Lord God, to show, to show or to be pretty or to show off our outfits, God, but we came in the presence of you, God, to give you the glory that's due your name. God, you are due glory because of what you've done in our lives. And so, Lord, as we move forward in this service this morning, God, receive our praise. Receive our worship. God, receive us. Make us accepted in the beloved. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and honor. Amen, amen, and amen.
song that the Spirit incorporates on the inside of them to give you some music. And see, I, I said this to say this here, a child of visitors, those of you that are visiting with us via internet, whether you're here with us now, your name is on not on Black Chapel Cross. If you came into this house today and you brought God with you and you know that you belong to him and he belongs to you, it's, uh, it behooves me not to just sit back and just let go and just let God not have his way. You let go and let God have his way. Let God do what he does best. That is me. God. I know I'm right. And if you do that, I guarantee you, God will meet you at your every appointed need. He'll meet you everywhere you, you, you every, your feet try, he'll get you just that, as he said in the past. He, God has not changed. He is still the same today. Our Sunday school lesson showed us back then. But where we are now, we have to realize that God is still in control. He's still in charge. Regardless of where it leads me. Bring down everything with this. <laughs> and this is the now saying we're doing this, we're doing that together, folks. And one lady hiding all the way to the preacher trying to get away from him. <laughs> My Bible tells me to take the shield of faith. And if you take the shield of faith, you can quench all the fiery darts of who? The evil one. That's what this is all about. Don't you let nobody shortchange you, including the devil, because he, he's still killing, stealing, and destroying. Now, we just acknowledge your presence here with us. We thank you that you enlightened to be with us on the internet, and our pastor, and when he gets here, he's here, and he's going to allow you to have the opportunity to join in if you choose to worship with us in spirit and in truth, and if you choose to uh, align yourself here with us online or in prison, you can do just that. Like I said, it's plenty of room in here. Come, those of you that are at home, laying on your, your sofa, in your bed, or wherever you are, get up. For the record says, for Satan not the what? <laughs> for such as what? <laughs> exactly. So you, you can get up and go to your job. You can get up and go to Walmart, Lowe's, I don't saw all you out there. Yeah, in, in the shopping mall, let them, let them run a special or something out there. The gun show. Break your neck in there. Let them get some food away. Did y'all see that line yesterday for Jacksonville? All right, all right. From the one side of Jackson to the next. But you can't come to the house of prayer. Oh, he better it now. No, I'm just telling you the truth. You shortchanging yourself. We have communion here today. The word says, do this in remembrance of me until I come. In other words, occupy your space. If you belong to God, if you stand for righteousness, if you stand there and be counted among it, stand there, occupy, do what God has informed and instructed you to do while you can, because the night is coming when no man can work. With that being said, those of you who, uh, we, we do have our song that how we love you, and we love you simply because, not because of who we are, but we love you because of the love of God that's on the inside of us. And if you come to Sunday school, you'll learn that yourself. Nobody has to tell you. And we love you because you know the, the love that's in us. And that makes all the sense because it, this is what love is all about. It's not just saying it with these lips, but it's executing it. And it's activating it. Let your, letting your faith in God do what needs to be done towards your fellow man and towards him first and foremost. Does that not make sense? Amen. 
Good morning again, Black's Chapel. Our announcements are printed as follows. Sister Tammy Payne Manning is asking members to call, text, or email for their end of the year 2021 document. You can email her at tpayne1908 at icloud.com and the phone number is 601-526-1831. That's the mobile number and the main number is 601-316-0047. And also the Girl Scouts, if you're wanting to buy cookies, you can still purchase cookies with their online stores. So you can go to the church website and find their personal links so that you can order online. And if there are any Girl Scouts present that would like to turn in cookie money, you can see Sister Applewhite and she'll receive that money. Our birthdays for the week on Tuesday, February 1st, we have Ronnie Parker and Sister Rashonda Rhodes. On Wednesday, February 2nd, we have Sister Barbara Richardson. And on the 3rd, February 3rd, we have Sister Alana Turner. Happy birthday, members. <laughs> Sister Val Blue in the demise of her daughter. We have Sister Bertha Bennett, Cameron Love, the grandson of Sister Mary Love. We have Joshua Henderson, Sister Jessie Bell Williams, mother of Brother Curtis Watson. Please be in continued prayer for the members on the prayer list, our bereaved members and sick and shut in members we are unaware of. Thank you and have a great week.
Morning, Black Chapel. We've reached that point in our service where it's uh, time for us to give back. Give back unto God. Give back 10% of what God has blessed us with in our tithes. Um, you know, th this morning uh, in Sunday school, we, we had a, a, a really good lesson uh, that, you know, I, I talk to you about tithes all the time. But, you know, our, our Sunday school lesson really focused in on the offering part, the giving part. It being our responsibility to give to those who are less fortunate and to do for those uh, who, who really need it. Amen. And this is not just our individual responsibility, but this is our church's responsibility also. And we just saying we shall overcome. This is something that we all do together. And at this time, you know, it's our time to give so that we have the resources in, in order to be able to support those who are in need. So just keep that in mind uh, as we come to, to give each Sunday. Yes, God expects us to bring our tithes into the storehouse because that's what he's requiring of us. But beyond that, there's also another expectation that we continue to bring and give unto those who are less fortunate and in need. Uh, here at Black Chapel, we have multiple ways to give. You can give, uh, if you're online, you can give through uh, our Givelify account. Uh, you can come by any time during the week on the west end of the church. Uh, and drop off in our drop box or again if you're present here today uh, just march around the table and we'll be happy to take it up for you uh, at this time we're going to put it in the hands of our ushers
things that we saw that we never would run out of. We have come to find that not to be true. Even with money in your pocket, this day, there are so many things that we need that money cannot buy. Because the supply is not available. And who would have ever thought that we would come to know a day, time, and a season when it comes to certain things that money had no worth to? Money couldn't get it to you. <coughs> but there is one supply that this earth never ever will run out of. And that is Jesus' will. There is an unnumberable supply of God's will. No man, no mathematician can number the things that our God can things that our God will do in behalf of us, his people. And one of the most valuable things that our God will, or Jesus will do, and that is that he will never leave us, nor forsake us. But that he will us always. Yes, he will. And I believe that's what there's something all about. Jesus, we They just left off the part, be with us. <laughs> and when God is with you, what can stand against you? When God is for you, he is more then the whole world are against you. Jesus will never, ever leave us. Nor forsake us. But he will be with us always. Even until the end of days. Jesus will. Oh yes he will. Oh yes he can. Thank God. For the omnipresent. For the omnipresence of the will of God. Everywhere you go, everywhere you look, everything you look at, everything that you see, you see the manifestation of the will of God. Because everything that was made, God made it, and there was not anything made that God did not make. And he willed it all into being. Let it be. And it became. And let it be known that God still has an unlimited number of let it be left. May not can find any other way to bring it into manifestation. But where there is a will, and there is always one will that will be there, and that is the will of God. And where there is a will, there's a way. Thank God for the will of God. <laughs> and this book is all about the born again baptized believer inheritance. And that is to the will of God. We don't have to push, we don't have to shove. We don't have to try to jump in front of anyone else, push anyone aside, be deceiving, conniving. There is enough inheritance to go around for all of those who know the Lord and are part of their sin. His will has a universal covering. 
Let's give this great choir another round of applause. Amen. And don't our ladies look beautiful in their white? And when I look back at them and see them in their white, each of those, each of them represent a desire for freedom. And I want to personally thank you for all that you have done and that you're doing. Do not was a work that only you could do. And that was to surrender your weakness to that which had to be done. And I can do it for you. And remember, folks, you can't be God given. No matter how hard And whenever anything is asked of us to surrender unto the Lord, there is a blessing that soon follows you. Because we can't be God given. Every request that's made in the name of Jesus is a seed for a blessing that will overtake that which you invested in your giving. Because we cannot be God given. No matter how hard we try. So once you enter into the body of Christ, whatever is asked of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, serves as a doorway to a greater blessing. A pathway. And God set it up that way. Ordained. A God who has figured it all out. And all we have to do as born again believers is just follow the yellow brick road to Wonderland, <laughs> to Graceland, to that place that we all long to be at. And all of us have our individual and collective places. And all of them are not found in heaven. There is an unnumberable number of those places found right here in earth. And our God can and our God will place us there. I would like to recognize our bereaved once again this morning. We're so blessed to have Brother McLeod back today. And we <laughs> recognize him in the night of his brother. Evangelist Cole in the eyes of her sister. And let us not forget <laughs> Sister Blue in the eyes of her daughter. And all of those you I may not know of, we thank God for you. And we continue to pray along with you as God continues to bring you through that season of separation. Our scripture reading this morning come from the Gospel of St. John. The third chapter. And the first through the fifth A 
a very familiar reading and passages of scripture. And there we will find these words. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know, we know that thou art a teacher, a teacher. Come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, Since it is God's will that none should perish, but that all shall be saved. That is the ultimate will of God. And he's saying that if you're not saved, then you cannot enter into God's will. Meaning that you cannot become an inheritance of the will of God. In spite of all those credentials that this man bore, one thing he could not do. except he be born again. And that was to enter into the kingdom of God. He could not inherit the will of God. And God's will covers much more territory than just a ticket to heaven. than a room in heaven. 
but his will fills both the heavens and the earth. And in his own place, the treasures that God has hidden here in earth are just as important. Season and time for everything under the heaven. And those treasures that God has hidden in earth are just as important to us as those in which he has hidden in heaven. Because we're in this season. There's a season and a time for everything which is under the heaven. And God is just as much God in earth as he is in heaven. So let us think on this thought. Understanding the new birth. Understanding the new birth. For the last two years, the funeral. has been the most attended social gathering. In these past two years, the funeral has been the most attended Social gathering in earth. Not just here in Jackson, Mississippi. Nor in Mississippi, nor in these United States, but universal. The funeral has been the most attended social gathering. And when you look at the pool in which death has to select from, it becomes understandable. As Paul tells us in the book of Hebrew, it is appointed unto every man. To die. Every man, every one of us, every living soul is walking upon the face of this earth. One day is going to die. All of us is the part of that pool which death selects from every day. When you look at the pool in which death has to select from, it becomes very understandable while in the past two years death has been the most attended social gathering. All of us are on our way out of here. And the only thing that can keep us from losing out to death is as Jesus told Nicodemus We must be. We got to be born again. And we find throughout the ministry of Jesus where Jesus was quite often traveling. Throughout various cities, 
towns and communities. Feeding the hungry. Healing the sick. Enabling the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak. Preaching and teaching. God's word. And out of all of the preaching and all of the teaching that Jesus did, I found it to be rather interesting that nowhere in the gospel is Jesus found being referred to as being a preacher. But throughout the gospel, Jesus was quite often found being referred to as being a great teacher. And one of the richest lessons that ever rolled off the lips of Jesus came in that pupil-teacher conference that Jesus held with one by the name of Nicodemus when he taught that lesson. About ye must be, ye got to be born again. And I found it to be rather interesting that such an important lesson as that, that such an important truth as that. You see, that is what we hope for, that is what we pray for, that is what we believe and trust in God for, that someday we will see the kingdom of God in all of its glory. Amen. I found it to be rather interesting that such an important lesson is that, that such an important truth is that, that Jesus only chose to teach it one time, but just one time. To just one man at night. And seemed like Jesus could have or should have found a more opportune time to preach or to teach such a lesson. Seemed like Jesus should have or could have waited until there were more people, until there were a larger gathering of people to hear and to come to know such a truth. And, and, on, and an opportune time that comes to mind is that time when that large multitude of people brought before Jesus the same This adulterous woman saying, Jesus, we, we have here before you this here adulterous woman. Now, Jesus, we know exactly what you're going to say. You're going to tell us, haven't I told you to speak that which thou know and to testify to that which we see? But let me tell you something, Jesus. We're not basing our accusation upon circumstantial evidence. We're not basing our accusation upon something we heard. We're not basing our accusation upon something we were told. We're not basing our accusation upon something we read. But you see, Jesus, we caught this here woman in the very act of committing adultery. We caught this here woman in another woman's house, in another woman's bed, between another woman's sheets, with another woman's husband. We caught this here woman in the very act of committing adultery. We're talking about understanding the new birth. And Jesus, according to the Mosaic law, this woman should be stoned. But Jesus, we want to know what you have to say about this. And what an opportune time it would have been for Jesus to have taught that lesson when that large multitude of people, when that large gathering of people, when that large multitude of, 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 of Christians stood before Jesus. Some of you may say, well, why do you refer to that multitude as being Christians? Well, they had to have be, been Christians. They had to have been saved people. They had to have been Christ-like. Because how else can you condemn someone else for their sins unless you are sinless? How 
can you condemn someone else of their sins unless you are sinless? What an opportune time it would have been for Jesus to have taught that lesson when that large multitude of, of, of deacons and trustees and ushers and choir members and ministers and evangelists and preachers and pastors stood before Jesus with stones in their hands and stones in their heart. What an opportune time it would have been for Jesus to have turned to that adulterous woman and say, Miss, you are an adulterous woman and you must be, you got to be born again. But instead, he kneeled down on the ground and he picked up a stick and he began to write in the dust. And I wonder this morning, Black Chapel, and our viewing audience, have you ever wondered what it was that Jesus wrote in the dust? But whatever it was, it was of great enough influence. It was of great enough conviction to change the minds and the hearts of all of that woman's accusers. Some theologians say that he wrote down some of the names of some of the men in whom some of the accusing women had laid with. Some say he wrote down the names of some of the women in whom some of the accusing men had laid with. And then Jesus looked up at the mother too and said, Now let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And every one of them dropped their heads and quietly walked away. You see, man doesn't, man doesn't calculate. Man doesn't appraise sin like God does. You see, when it comes to man, there are certain sins that man will give you sanction for. There are certain sins that man will pardon you for. And there are other sins he'll crucify you for. He'll crucify you for it. He will crucify you for adultery. He'll crucify you for fornication. He'll crucify you for drug addiction. He will crucify you for a whole lot of things. And there are other that he will pardon you for. But let me tell you something. When it comes to God, sin is sin. When it comes to God, sin is sin. When it comes to God, it is just as sinful not to pay your tithes as it is to commit adultery. It is just as sinful not to come to church and worship God on Sunday morning as it is to commit fornication. The only difference in the two is one breaks God's judicial law and the other breaks God's moral law. But when it comes to God, sin is sin. So if you live in a glass house, don't you throw no stones. And all of us have some glass in our house somewhere. Sin is sin. If you live in a glass house, don't you throw no stone because you're going to break something in your own house. You're going to mess up something in your own house. You're going to destroy something in your own house. Jesus turned to that adulterous woman and said, Sin no more. And another opportune time to come to mind. Remember that day of Jesus' crucifixion when Jesus hung there on the cross at Calvary, hanging between two thieves, one on his left and one on his right. When that thief on his right turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, please remember me. What an opportune time it would have been for Jesus to have taught that lesson. When that thief on his right turned to Jesus and said, when you come into your kingdom, please remember me. It is said that 30 years after Jesus', Jesus crucifixion that the emperor of Rome had his ultimate to go out and do a censor on the lamb skins that were consumed on the day of crucifixion. And each lamb skin represented at least, at, 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 at least 10 Jews or Gentiles. And his ultimates counted 25,000 lamb skins that had been warehoused from the crucifixion. So there was an estimated number of 250,000 Jews and Gentiles who stood at the foot of the cross crying out, crucify him, crucify him, 
crucifying. That was an opportune time for Jesus to turn to that thief on his right and say, Mister, you a thief and you a robber, and you must be, you got to be born again. But instead, Jesus turned to that thief on his right and he said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, Black Chapel, Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. You see, if Jesus had told that adulterous woman, Miss, you are an adulterous woman, and you must be, you got to be born again, then there are some women out there who could, could say, well, he wasn't speaking in reference of me because I never committed adultery in my life. If Jesus had told that thief and that robber who hung on the cross, Mister, you a thief, you're a robber, and you must be, you got to be born again. Then there are some men out there who say, well, I, I don't fit in that category. He wasn't speaking in reference of me because I've never stolen. I've never robbed anybody in my life. But Jesus, he turned and he looked at this man named Nicodemus, Nicodemus and he said, Nicodemus, you must be, you got to be born again. So Black Chapel, let us take a look at this man named Nicodemus because there is some Nicodemus in all of us. First of all, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, meaning he was a member of the upper ruling class among the Jews. The Pharisees were the keepers and the guardians of God's religious laws. The Pharisees were the most dedicated and the most concentrated men in the church. The Pharisees attended church service three times each day, morning, noon, and night. The Pharisees prayed in the church three times each day, morning, noon, and night. And the Pharisees, they gave their tithe, they gave their offerings, they gave 10% of all of their honey to the church. And it was this church going, Bible reading, prayerful, tithe paying man that Jesus looked at one day and said, Nicodemus, you must be, you got to be born again. And I know if he said it to Nicodemus, he meant all of us. He meant all of us. Those of us who might come to church one Sunday out of a month and leave that service with our heads hung high and our chest stuck out like we just done God a favor. Those of us who, when it's time to march around the offering table and give our tithes and our offerings, we reach into our front pocket and give God our spare change. Those of us who only believe in praying when it's time to beg God for something. If God told that church going Bible reading pastor, tithe paying man, you must be, you got to be born again. I know he meant all of us, all of us, all of us. And not only was Nicodemus a Pharisee, but Nicodemus also was a member of the Sanhedrin Council, meaning he was a man of authority. He was a member of the Supreme Court. He was a Supreme Court Chief Justice. He was a man of position, a man of authority, a man of wealth. Nicodemus, he had silver, he had gold, he had beasts of the field, he had servants. But Nicodemus knew that one day, one day, his brooks might dry up, his grass might wither away, his cattle might die off, his banks might get robbed. Nicodemus wanted a security that could only be found in the arms of Jesus. So he came to Jesus by night saying, Rabbi, Rabbi, we know, we know, Rabbi, meaning me and my fellow councilmen, we followed and monitored your every move. We scrutinize you every step of the way. You see, some of us were there out in the desert place when you took two little fish and five loaves of bread and fed a mother two to five thousand men, not counting women and children. Some of us were right there. Some of us were there down at the grave site that had held Lazarus in the sleep of death for four long days. When you spoke to death and said, Death, loose him and let him go. Some of us were right there. And with all of that sin, with all of that hearing, and with all of that knowing, we come to this conclusion. We know that thou art a teacher from God. But how else could I do the miracles that thou doest except God be with you? And Jesus turned to Nicodemus and said, Nicodemus, I don't care who you are, what you are, what you know, not what you have, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, Nicodemus, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. And Nicodemus said, Jesus, 
How can a man be born again when he's old? Can he biologically go back into his mother's womb and be born all over again? And I can see Jesus, he said, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. And nigga, you go, how can I be born again when I'm old? And let me tell you something, Mother Brock Chapel. No one can express not explain the new birth quite like mother nature can i love the way mother nature express express and explain the new birth through the transformation of a tadpole you know what a tadpole is don't you a tadpole is that little black watery creature that swims around the edge of the pond in the mud in the slime in the filth and in the stink until one day mother nature whisper in that tadpole's ear telling that tadpole oh mr tadpole don't you know that you have in your capacity the ability to become something new, something wonderful, something beautiful? And after being ministered to by Mother Nature, that tadpole will swim out to the center of that pond, die down to the bottom of that pond, and cover itself up in mud until it undergo a stage of metamorphosis. And once it undergo a stage of metamorphosis, it is transformed from that of a tadpole to that of a dwarf frog. And the first thing that new creature will do, he will swim to the surface of that pond. Then he will swim to the edge of that pond. And he will hop out of the water, hop out of the slime, hop out of the fields, hop out of the stake, hop out of that stagnant water. He will hop out into the grass, among the flowers and among the trees. And late round that midnight hour, he will hop up on an old hollow log and croak out songs of praise to God all night long. Sit a man, sit a woman, sit a child. Don't you know, you don't have to stay out there in that old sinful world. You don't have to stay out there in the slime, the field, and the stake. Don't you know you have in your capacity the ability to become something wonderful, something beautiful, something blessed and highly favored. And you don't have to go down to the pond and cover yourself up in mud. All you have to do is go down on your bended knees in spirit and truth and tell the Lord, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of being out there in this world. I'm tired of the slime. I'm tired of the filth. I'm tired of the stake. I don't want to be a tadpole no more. I don't want to be a seal no more. Here are my hands. Here are my feet. Here's my mind, my heart, my soul, my spirit. Take me, make me, mold me, fold me to what you have me to be. And if you find anything there that shouldn't be, wash me, wash me, wash me until I'm whiter than snow. Because I know in order for me to someday see the kingdom of God, I must be, I got to be born again. Got to be born again. In order to enter the true kingdom of God, in order to become an heir to the will of God, you must be, you got to God will fill the earth. Available to us through one path, confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart the Lord Jesus. And that God raised him from the dead through a state of God's sorrow. And thou shalt become an inheritor through the will of God. The door of the church is open. Understanding the new birth. Understanding it. We're not saved because we've been so good, nor so careful. But by the grace and the mercy of God, we're saved by grace through faith. We have nothing to boast about because all of us are still vulnerable to the wiles and the fiery darts of the enemy. But who are we to condemn? But rather go to in godly love in the spirit of Christ and do the will of God by attempting to restore the broken vessel. Not to trash it, but to take God's love and God's mercy that he has embedded and impregnated in us to glue them back together again. What a blessing it is to be a carrier
And he has ordained all of us to go forth to the four corners of the earth and make, make disciples of others. And while doing your going and doing your arrival and doing the making process, I will be with you always, even until the end of days when there is time no more. Then and only then will I receive you unto myself. But until then, I am with you. And as long as God is with you, he is more than the whole world I guess you. You can execute the will of God as long as God is with you. We know not what God's will may be pertaining to, but all we have to do is maintain my focus. And that is, the just must walk and must live by faith. And faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Going God's way. Doing it God's way. And God's will will always come into manifestation. Whatever it may be. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. What an awesome, mighty, unconditional, loving God we serve. And this extension is not only extended to those who are in the sanctuary, but it's a universal covering. Whosoever may come across this service may be unintentional. And the Lord tears your heart, purge your heart, and feed you until you desire to be fed no more with his will toward you. And you have a desire to become a part of this blessed Christian family here at Black Chapel. We would love to have you as a part of our immediate family in this house in which God has planted us in. The door of the church is open unto you. If you desire to become a part of this Christian family, then all you have to do is key into the comments section or inbox your name, your telephone number, and the word virtual member. And I myself will personally contact you and receive you into the body that live in this room in God's mansion. The door of the church is open unto you. By way of letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what you have, nor what you know. If you have not been born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God in all of his glory. And God's kingdom feels both the heavens and the earth. Both. Everything that is was made and created by God to serve him, to worship him, to praise him, to honor him, to glorify him. And God has blessed us with an unnumbered number of ways and means to go about working such works right here in this earth. And we serve a master who will pay you. He's not going to undercut you. He's not going to deceive you. He's not going to do you in. He's going to do you right. Every time, God is going to do right by you. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, I'm caring for baptism. The door of the church is open.
allowing us time and opportunity to come to his house and to work out our very own soul salvation with fear and with tremor knowing that we are in the presence of the almighty God and what a blessing it is to be in such a presence we're getting ready now for our meal and those of you who can please ma'am please sir remain as we prepare to partake of this sacred sacrament God bless you
once again we come at this hour with bowed heads and humbled hearts. We come, Lord God, in remembrance of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In remembrance of that in which he acts of every born-again baptized believer. To those who have come to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. To do this in remembrance of him as often as we will. And how can we forget the gift that was given to us. That we may be allowed entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Father, we pray your continued blessings upon your mother too your family, those in whom has come to know you in the pardon of their sins, and those who know you not, we thank you for your long suffering, because just like with us, you waited us out, because all of us were born in sin and shaped by iniquity. But thanks to your grace, your mercy, and your long suffering, we are where we are right now, as a part of the attached part of the body of Jesus. And oh, how blessed we are to hold such a position and such an office on the body. And Father, we pray that as we prepare to partake of this Holy Commune, that if there's anything on our minds or in our hearts that's not pleasing to you, we ask of you to assist us in removing them as far from our mind, our conscious thought, as the East lies from the West. Because we want to be accepted at your table, not just at your table, but we want to be greeted and accepted and welcomed to your table, Lord God. And we know that you, your spirit, will not dwell in unclean places. So we thank you, Lord God, for your cleansing, for your purification, for your anointing. Pray that as we partake, that we will be found worthy of partaking of. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, amen. Let us prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper. Let us remove the first seal on our container and receive the cracker. This is the bread that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was bruised for the remission of all of our sins. Let us eat.
Now, our second layer. This is the wine that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was shed for the remission of all of our sins. Let us drink. After Jesus, the disciples had eaten of the Lord's Supper, they rose and sung a hymn and marched out to the Mount of Olives. Let us all please stand for the singing of our hymn, which will be followed by dismissal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 